Hi guys, my name is Sean. I'm a houseplant enthusiast from Jakarta, Indonesia. Thank you for clicking into this video. I'm at Floy, an international plant exhibition here in Jakarta that will showcase some trending plants coming out of Indonesia this year. This is an aeroid tour episode where I'm going to show you a different and unique aeroids that is coming out of Indonesia. For non-aeroids, there will be another episode for the next week. This episode is sponsored by Exit Plant. More on that at the end of the episode. But Exit Plant provide export service. So any of the booths that you see here today or any products you're interested in, you can definitely engage in the services directly and make a purchase and have Exit Plant ship it to your home country. When we enter the exhibition, we are greeted by this beautiful display. So this is landscape by Kebun Raya. They are actually the botanic garden uh, company here in Indonesia and they wanted me to specially mention that a lot of the larger aeroids here and that Monstera mint are provided by Mr. Noldi and we do have an episode on Mr. Noldi. He's a really really uh, good purveyor of rare plants and a lot of variegated Monsteras are under his care. He's growing them out. So check out that episode. I'm going to link that up above if you want to see his nursery. I wanted to spend a minute here to kind of welcome you guys and ease you guys into the video and uh, we're going to enter over here. There's about 150 booths. So this is going to be a long, that's Eddie. So this is going to be a very, very long video. The first booth here is actually Mr. Eddie. Eddie Pranoto, he's a, a hybridizer. He does primarily anthuriums, but he does do different kinds of aeroids as well. And he has a lot of different products. Feel free to follow him on Instagram. Uh, just unpacking some new plants. It's very interesting. Look at this. Oh my gosh, this variegated uh, anthurium here. So uh, Mr. Eddie, he releases like new hybrids almost every week on his Instagram. So check it out, follow his Instagram to see the newest product. Here are some of the, the ones that he's launching here. I could spend all day in this booth, but we got to give everyone some equal timing. But this one is really, really beautiful. Look at that, Look at sinus. And that one too, oh my gosh. This one, it says here is the Anthurium black muscle and self. So, so I know that you guys are not here physically, but he has all these signs here. And uh, yeah, this is a lot of products. Very interesting, very overwhelming, but I can only show you snippets of it. Uh, feel free to reach out uh, directly if you are interested to uh, check out some more. This is really beautiful too, oh my gosh. Look at that. Look at that amazing sinus. And there's a lot. Um, these are still quite young. But you can see the, the parent plants are here, the photos. So check him out. He's probably the number one hybridizer now in Indonesia for anthuriums. Uh, beautiful variegated anthuriums. We'll see quite a lot of them here. Uh, they're coming into stock in Indonesia. Look at that, this is so stunning. My gosh. And every leaf is wonderfully variegated here. This one has like an orange tone to the variegation. Amazing. And Eddie is also known for hybridizing these uh, bird nest type anthuriums. We have an episode shot at his nursery like a, two years back to show you some of his products. But these guys, they can get absolutely massive. These are still teeny tiny babies. And there's so many different varieties, shapes and color. But for this one, you actually do need a larger space because they can get large very quickly. And you also need very good light. If you want to maintain this beautiful rosette, you're going to need some filtered uh, skylight or shade that is coming directly from above. They will not do so well in shelves. Um, one tip is that for anthurium, if you only have a shelf space, anthuriums like this will do well because they will all face towards the front of the shelf. That's where they get their light from. Uh, so yeah, just keep in mind when you guys grow your plants under shelves, there's, unless you have these beautiful lights, of course, but a lot of you guys don't. So the plants are only getting light from the front. This is a luxuriant purple EPP, it says. Oh my gosh, this is still a baby, but you can already see the beautiful wrinkles from the luxuriance. And the color is also very, very stunning on this. And that one too, that one in the back, oh my gosh. That one looks like uh, Forgetti Eye with the uh, lobe. Uh, 
close together like that with that spider vein in the middle. This is really, really beautiful. This anthurium here, this is actually jet black. Look at that. Have you seen something as black as this? And the old leaves will turn green over time. This is actually very, very beautiful. Actually, this booth is becoming very interesting because I think there are a few, yeah, there are a few collaborations between Eddie and some of his wonderful neighbors who actually sometimes hang out at his nursery. And they have all these really interesting products here. This is really cute that they have all these t-shirts. I might want one later. Yeah, look at that. Look at the back of that. I'm all about black, uh, back print on a t-shirt because I have tattoo in my arm. So this will look really, really interesting. That's cool. Love that. Very good collaboration. We are in the booth of Cartel Down. There's actually a lot of anthuriums. They're very serious about collecting and selling anthuriums. And this here, she's the designer for this booth, Ute. Yeah, her Instagram is going to be on the screen. She's got a lot of really beautiful planty content. And I'm excited to hear that she's now part of the Cartel Down team. So yeah, so this, is, this booth is her doing here. Very cute. I like this almost like a vintage bathroom style decor. So this is the Pride and Joy of Indonesia. This is the Anthurium King of Spades. Look at the beautiful round leaf and the Venetian. It looks very beautifully pink. Um, one of the easier Anthuriums to grow, actually. That one is a King of Spades that is crossed with red crystal on them. So you can see it's got a bit more red than before. This is actually very beautiful. And these are all seedlings that you can uh, Maybe make a purchase. They are reliable and exporting plants. They're very, very experienced with doing so. And these are all the different um, seedlings. The names are on the pots. This is really, really beautiful sort of plant. And this is also interesting. It says it's not for sale, NFS. But look at the new leaf come out. This is really beautiful. That's middle right there look at that oh so this here is a anthurium clarinervium lithium i was told so it's either a hybrid or a mutation from the regular clarinervium this is actually interesting that little nipple in the middle this is very very interesting yeah but this is cute against that backdrop there so dramatic of mint anthurium this one kunaya lense i'm seeing this everywhere i wonder I really need a backstory for this because I don't know exactly where this came from. But a lot of people seem to have this in stock and they're still very, very prized now. This is also interesting. This is a Porti Portelay crossed with Luxuriums. And this name is called the Anthurium Shiva. Wow. This is really, really cute. Look at this variegation here. This, this is the silver chrome. It actually really caught my eye. It's very, very silver. It's really beautiful. And that new leaf, my gosh, this is very adorable. And this is his own hybrid. This is a papillae laminum hybrid variegated. So we'll see a lot of variegated anthuriums come into the market soon. But there's also all these other um, king of spades and uh, dorayaki. They're also born in Bogor. This is a dress, dress laria, a cross with hafania. This is a papillae laminum golden. This is still quite small, but look at that. That's interesting. So all of these are actually golden. So if you're into this kind of color tone, this is very, very interesting. So they found this mutation uh, in, in the seedlings and then they propagate it uh, out of it. So yeah, might be uh, good implications for landscaping actually. Anthurium palms, uh, you got to really follow them on Instagram if you are like interested to find out more, but this is the parent parents of these uh, hybrids. Looks like a bird beak, but it is wonderfully variegated. And then I think there's some that's called the, the bull or the cobra. Um, there's a lot actually that's coming from Indonesia. Again, these rosette types, they typically need more space to grow. This is really beautiful. This is a pterodactyl, variegated. And there's flowering profusely. My gosh, this is stunning. And it's a pedata radiatum, variegated. This is not a easy one. They tend to get these uh, fungus infection often, even with the non-variegated. So I struggle with mine, but it's got such a beautiful shape. And a lot of people do hybridize this as the mother plant. More variegated anthuriums. Look at these babies. How cute. This one almost has a half moon leaf. This is also stunning. Look at that. 
I think I mentioned in the channel before that I used to be really put off by variegated anthuriums. They look so unnatural because the thing with anthuriums is that just the green form itself looks so stunning as it is. So the variegation at the time felt very unnecessary. But look at this. This is a displaying very, very interesting, almost like a dreamlike watercolor splotch on them. And the variegation on anthuriums vary so much, way more than the philodendrons. They can be like this neon orange, they can be this neon yellow, they can be orange, flamingo pink, and also white, of course. This is also very interesting. Look at this new leaf come in. My gosh. This one seemed to be a mint anthurium. Yes, mint anthuriums are a thing. So it's just informed by the owner here that this is the Papillilaminum uh, mother plant. And through selfing pollination, they've produced all these really interesting mint variegated babies. And this is actually stunning. If you look at the coloration on the leaves. This is a really, really beautiful, almost like a sunset orange. And you've got that bit of uh, mint on the surface. So what we saw before, those are the seedlings also. Those are the siblings of this. Look at that. This is so, so beautiful. And they're actually really, really big exporter of aeroids. So do check them out. I believe they are based in Bandung. I don't think the booth is ready. Normally they would have a lot more stuff than this. This art garden is a huge, huge nursery, but they're getting this ready to be shown. This is the Anthurium Michel. So I was just explain that all that you see here, they are the Anthurium Michel. They are a variety of the red crystal from Dock Block. So they're selling a lot of these stock uh, that's coming in from the United States. So these are all imports from the United States. And this is what the uh, mature leaf would potentially look like. This is the booth of Live With Plants, and that's home over there. And it's my first time seeing home here in Indonesia. This is his booth, and there are some anthuriums here on show. And these are all species. I'm not familiar with what they are. This is Kunyang... Kun... What? I am not going to attempt to say this, but this is what the baby leaves look like. Interesting, they're wrapped up in this interesting, like almost like a Barbie type uh, plastic covering. And there's one particular one here. This is a hybrid. And this one is the Magnificum SKG Lemonade. Interesting. And back here, this is an anthurium that I've never seen before. Uh, it's got really, really interesting leaves. My gosh, does not look like an anthurium. And home, actually, if you see its nursery, is plastered with variegated Monstera. So if you're looking uh, to import in different kinds, different types varie of variegated Monsteras, uh, do reach out. He has literally all the all the different varieties, all the names. Of, I think Yellow Marilyn or something. I did do a tour in his nursery before. It's massive. And it's interesting to see him bringing some of these plants here to Indonesia. This is another type. This is Ocean Mint, it says here. <laughs> the creme de la creme of Anthuriums. Look at this. So this belongs to Pak Chandra. We did some episodes at his nursery before. Uh, it's called Indo Aeroid. They do have a lot of different types of aeroids, but they're primarily focused on collecting anthuriums and hybridizing and also increasing stock. So they're making a lot of seedlings. I'll be doing an episode at the nursery at some point, but this is their showroom. And we're gonna be spending a lot of time here. This is insanely beautiful. Look at all these beautiful variegated anthuriums. And this is what really sold me to the variegated anthuriums. When you see this, my gosh, look at the painting too. It's beautiful illustrated in these watercolor paintings. They really elevate uh, the whole type of plant when you can see that how complicated the colors, waves can be in the variegation. So, and of course, for some of us who really cannot afford to buy variegated anthuriums, this is something that we can take home <laughs> and uh, decorate in our homes. That one's also a beautiful painting. Look at that, side by side. Oh my gosh, this is so stunning. Let me know in the comment section what you think of the variegated anthuriums. Some of you, if you're new to this, it's your first time seeing this, you may be as put off as I was when I first saw these variegated anthuriums but I'm really sold to it now. Let me get closer to it actually. This deserve a gander. So this is a crystallinum variegated white, even though it's white variegated, but look at the new leaf. The color is like orange and a big of, bit of pink rim around the edges. My gosh, and this painting, look at that. 
How intricate is it? It's not easy to paint this. My gosh. Stunning. Yeah, I'm interested. I'll be reading all the comments. Let me know what you think of variegated anthuriums because they're going to be uh, it plant next year in 2024. I promise you. Clarinervium hybrid. But clarinerviums typically don't get this big. So this is probably a type of hybrid. And these days it's really hard to tell anymore because all these plants are hybridized. And just so you know, uh, they've been collecting modern plants that are variegated. And when you cross one with another species, not only are you going to get interesting shapes and forms in the leaves, you're also going to get different and interesting combination of variegation. This one has been so well taken care of. Look at the variegation in each leaf. This is really stunning. And this is a hybrid. Uh, it's called the Batman because it looks like a bat, I guess. And this is a, I can tell from the shape, it's a Pedata radiatum crossed with something else. Look at this tiny leaf, but they get big. I think this is already almost mature because it's flowering quite profusely already. So this is stunning. Look at the new leaf that just came in. So you can't really see the variegation yet when the new leaf came in, but they will fade into this beauty over time. This is so stunning. And of course, the dark leaf anthuriums are happening right now. They're also a trend. Uh, they're, they're becoming a little bit more attainable, a little bit more affordable than they were last year. And this is also another one that's dark leaf. Again, this is jet black. So this is the Anthurium Ace of Spades from Tezula. And sometimes when you cross this dark leaf Anthurium with a variegated, you come up with uh, a product that can be like really nice maroon and then they fade into green, a uh, nice dark green over time. So there's a lot of different color combinations when it comes to Anthurium hybrids. Look at this new leaf. This is like a, a color of the fall season. Really stunning. And then let me get close up on the variegation of this. My gosh. And this is the, the king of spades variegated. Holy crap, holy mackerel. So this, um, I was informed yesterday by Pak Chandra, I was at his nursery yesterday, that they actually bought the green form of this. And from there, they, they found one that is variegated. How crazy is that? So the King of Spades have been the tried and tested hybrid from Indonesia that's done really well. It's beautiful. It held up its value quite well. And there's so many different and interesting forms of them. They're kind of round, round and heart shaped. And with this beautiful veining around them. And they're actually not that hard to grow. I actually have one myself. And I've killed many anthuriums, but this is the one that actually has survived for me. Another dark leaf anthurium. And this one is interesting because look at it, it's com almost completely round and the new leaf look like this. And the flower is like teeny tiny. Oh my gosh, this is like cute. This is very, very cute. This is new and I think a few booths have it. So I think this probably came into stock or came into discovery not very long ago. So this is actually the red crystal in them from NSE. And I was explained there's a number, it says number two here, because they have three different forms in the nursery that they use as mother plants. So this one here is a little bit more upright, if you see it. And the one next to this is the number one. They tend to flop over and hang over more. And I did notice that in some of my Ethereum, some of them tend to like want to hang, hang down more than others. But this is what the red crystal line them look like. And they were actually really, really big for the last few years. Uh, a lot of people actually buy them up as uh, mother plants to be used for hybridizing. But they also stand well on their own. They look beautiful on their mm -hmm. own. All right, this was just sold. This is actually really, really beautiful. And look at this complicated variegation and also the edges. It's really, really unique on this Anthurium. Also, the variegation is very, very stable. So this is the product of indo uh hybrid from them. This is the Luxury 88. And this is Papili laminum with luxuriance and it's hot, uh, variegated. Look at how beautiful this is. So this is the mother plant and they're actually doing more hybridizing out of this. So we'll see even more interesting babies come out of this. But this is the large one. And let me show you what the little ones look like. And these are the babies and they come from cutting. So they're actually quite expensive. This one was actually sold earlier today. We are in day one, by the way. It's the morning of day one of the show. And this was already sold. It's very, very expensive. I think, uh, yeah, that's the price. But this is uh, done from cutting, not from seedling. But look at how beautiful the variegation is from these. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. And this one here too, this is dominantly white, as you can see here. This is uh, the Magnificum that's variegated. Um, really interesting. This is what the other leaf, this one seems to have more balanced variegation, but this is also beautiful, this side. My gosh, look at these paintings. So these paintings, by the way, are for sale. So reach out on Instagram if you want to know. Uh, yeah, 
and this will live forever. And <laughs> I know that some of you, it's difficult for some of you to grow this, but this one, look at that. Yeah, and this too, this is really stunning. It's all done by, done by watercolor by a local artist. So this Anthurium is new to the market. Not many people have it yet. It's the Anthurium Pelta do something Brazil. The name's gonna be on the screen. This is the new leaf that's coming out. Look at that, this is crazy. This is so beautiful. Oh my gosh. The Anthurium Magnificum hybrid, variegated, really nice. Sunset orange, or maybe not a sunset. This is almost like a turmeric orange color. They're really stunning. The new leaf is that color, almost black. Oh my gosh, this is so stunning. Look at that. The transformation of color is just uh, really, really quite beautiful. But this one really, it really caught my eye again because the leaves, you can tell without touching the leaves that they're actually very thick. So this is a, quite a sturdy plant, but the variegation, uh, how it changes color uh, from dark to light, from orange to white variegation. This one, my gosh. I think this is probably the best variegated anthurium I've seen to date. This is really stunning. This is an uh, anthurium black velvet. My gosh, look at that. This is purple in color, very, very purple. And look at how nice is that uh, smooth texture with the wrinkles on it. Yeah, it's like a, it's like, look at it. it's got like abs, it's got really mean abs. It's like this plant actually works out. My gosh, and the back looks really, really stunning as well. This is really cool. Now, this is the booth of Exit Plant. It is actually the sponsor of this video and I'm actually very proud to be sponsored by them because I do use their service. They were formerly known as Titi Kijau and I think two years back, some of you may remember that I shipped a lot of plants to you guys through their service. But they're also doing this contraption here. So they are able to customize um, the size, the uh, lighting and everything for different plants needs. I know that some of these plants like these variegated anthuriums are a little bit more fragile. And a lot of you guys live in places where your living room conditions cannot be uh, conducive for these plants to grow. So yeah, they have this cooling pad system with humid air blowing inside that is very, very good for rare plants. And this will make a really beautiful tank if you give it some time. There's some really interesting variegated anthurium over here. Seven sellers here and the logo is on the left hand side. So feel free to check out their businesses. Uh, one by one, but they are collaborative and it's such a beautiful display over here. Look at the um, Pleistherium here, this desert plant, terrariums, and of course there's a lot of anthurium here. And some of the vendors here, they're actually hybridizers of anthuriums, such as the BB Aeroid, and these are some of their work. You got to follow them one by one to check out their product. This one says it's uh, Papillilaminum X. Long. This is a, a strange one to me. And of course, a lot of these beautiful silver anthuriums here. So this is an anthurium species from Mexico, I think. It's like one of a kind. Look how beautiful it is. It looks almost like a Sirtosperma. But this particular one is actually sold. So someone is walking home with this beautiful plant. And this here, this is an unlikely hybrid. If you look at this is the mother, a portulae, and this is the anthurium luxuriance. And this is the round form, right? Because luxuriance are sometimes uh, more in the form. Round and dark, this is the baby, as you can see here. Cute. So yeah, this is a uh, mom, dad, and, and child. <laughs> Damn, okay, so this is a, sort of an anthurium set up in a terrarium. And as you can see, there's uh, some plant tools and more larger terrariums setups here. This is a cool way to grow anthuriums and other humidity-loving plants. And Jeff here, he's found miniature anthuriums, and they're usually mutations. As you can see here, that's a baby uh, king of spades. So there's vari varieties of anthuriums that stay small, and they're suitable candidates for these glass terrariums. This is very, very adorable, actually. So the one on the left is uh, Anthurium Chamberlaini and this one is the Moniadum. How beautiful, they have almost dark, almost black foliage. This is insane, almost purple if I can say. This is uh, by Raka Plants, R-A-K-A Plants and they do Anthuriums. There's a lot of seedlings here as well. I'm really running low on battery in terms of like how much Anthuriums I can handle for the day but this is Dorayaki Cross with Red Crystal. 
Right, Let's check out this top shelf here. So I think they are really into the darker leaf. And Tiana, it looks bright here, but it's actually jet black in front of me. So these are all like dark leaf anthuriums that they have here and some on the wall as well. This is the anthurium blue papillae laminum for Sherman. And it's actually very, very dark. And you can see a bit of electrifying details down the center there. Uh, more anthuriums here. And this is Goliath. I guess we did see actually that there were a few Goliath hybrid around. So I guess this is the Goliath. Uh, that's one of the parent plants. Very, very velvety and very dark. And it's got this classic green. So I wonder why maybe this is a trait that they're looking for uh, when they're hybridizing this as a parent plant. It's a dark phoenix that were very sought after. Like last year, there was a shortage of them and people are willing to pay a lot of money for these. Um, so maybe these are coming into a bit more stock these days, but still uh, rather pricey. This one is like completely black. Look at that, this is crazy. So they are like dark leaf anthurium lovers here. And this here, this is the Fort Sherman series. That one leaf is really interesting. Really has like that, I don't know what you call like a corset or a body armor uh, shape to it. Kandang Gajah Setu. Kandang Gajah in Bahasa Indonesia means uh, elephant cage. So here they have a lot of anthuriums. I see some baby seedling variegated anthuriums here. Look at all these names. I, I cannot show you each one of these, but this is a variegated dorayaki, for example. This tiny little leaf, uh, silver blush variegated. It's a lot of interesting things. You guys really should come by to one of these shows and, and spend some time here if you can. So this here, this is the product of Mia Hambali. Yeah, she's the daughter of Mr. Greg Hambali, who hybridizes Aglonimas. We'll get to it later, but I wanted to show her anthurium. This is the Warroquianum, and you can see here some really beautiful forms of Warroquianum. These are still babies, and the price is actually very good, my gosh. Good price on these. And this is the Viterifolium cross with Warroquianum variegated. You guys, this is crazy. This is freaking crazy. You can see the lines of the Warroquianum. You can see the veins because the um, Viterifolium itself doesn't have strong veins. But they're both a uh, pendular anthurium, Bokasi aeroid community. So this is the community of people that's there. I guess they are, what do you even call this? The, <laughs> a caricature of everyone there. This is members probably. And beautiful anthurium. Look at this one here. Oh my gosh. This is so stunning. And it's the Guardians of Galaxy poster in the back. This is really, really stunning. My gosh. So there are a few different collectors, home growers, and they are propagating plants. And I think they're also creating a lot of interesting hybrids. But they form a uh, very tight community and they oftentimes will participate in the events together. So a lot of the products that you see here are actually represented by different growers. So you really have to follow to find out what they have because there's some really interesting anthuriums coming out of this community. This is really cool. And I think here yeah, they primarily focus on like the dark leafed anthuriums, although I do see some variegated ones over here. And mostly they sell the seedlings. This is really cool. This is the um, corduroy cross with papillae laminum. This is actually very overwhelming, the selection of anthurium hybrids that's coming out of Indonesia. This one here is actually quite interesting because it doesn't have that smooth line that a lot of anthuriums have. It's got that roughly edge on the leaves. There's so many characters uh, and possibilities out of these anthurium hybrids. And here's an anthurium delta force if you're looking for one. Gosh, this one here, it says it's the anthurium goliath crossed with I don't know what this is. This stands for something. This is also one of their products. A lot of them are beautiful. Really, you need to take your time, get to know these plants. And I know that a lot of you guys are not here, but try to come to either the Indonesian show or the Thailand shows. When you come here and you actually take your time, spend a day and just to absorb it, absorb the beauty. We can't really buy all of these plants. We can't take all of them home with us. But just being in the presence of these guys, it's quite something too. This is a Fort Sherman seedling. Anthurium Goliath. I don't know, I guess Goliath is the thing. I've not really been familiar with, uh, mm. with this variety. They, they seem to specialize here in variegated anthuriums. It's beautiful, still a baby. 
And what I particularly like about them is that they have the price and also the name of the plant on it. I think it's really important for plants to have IDs on them. This is really, really stunning. This one, my gosh, Crystallinum Platinum. My gosh, look at that new leaf. It's so stinking cute. I think this does not look like an anthurium. It looks more like a, a variegated piper. Yeah, if you see pipers, the variegation looks a little bit more like this. Anthurium clavigerum variegated, my gosh. This is actually beautiful. Look at the variegation on this new leaf. And this is already a mature form. They can get really big, actually. Macrolobium crossed with Pedata radiatum. Very cute. Look at the variegation. This is the Pedata radiatum variegated. And next to it, this is a pterodactyl. This is also often used in hybridization. They have a heart-shaped leaf, almost. So this vendor is coming in from Thailand, and this is called Super Nursery. And then this is an anterior forgetty eye dark crossed with luxuriance, which is very interesting. It's got almost like a copper finish to the leaves. This is the anterior black velvet crossed with the regali light. This is some serious, serious hybrid happening here. You want to say hi? Yeah, hi. <laughs> I've seen them before in, a, in the Thailand shows multiple times. And I think they have a partnership with Michael D'Andrea as well. Yeah, from the United States. And just now this one is um, Ace of Spades from Silver Chrome. Yeah, and actually it looks light green on the camera, but it's actually dark, dark, dark color on in, re in reality. And this is the product of Australia. And this is actually a Anthurium forgetty eye that's variegated. It's really rare for things to come out of Australia, like plant the plants. And I think there are some interesting products here. This says it's an Anthurium Neptune, very dark in person. Yeah, I don't know why this, the effect of the camera, it makes all the anthurium that's velvety look very shiny and green, uh, but they're wonderfully velvety and dark. This is the anthurium obor. It's made in Indonesia. And this one has red veins, if you can see here. And there's one variety that has some all green leaves. And it comes out curly like this. I don't know if I filmed this before at Mr. Eddie's place, but this is how the emerging leaf looks like. Also from up above, look at that. How beautiful. This is actually very stunning. If you like roughly plants, this is rosette though. It just want to grow in a rosette pattern. So you're going to need to have very good top light from up above and some space. They can get rather big. And here are some of the stem cuttings. Uh, so the stem cuttings take a while to produce, but they will have exactly the same genetics as the parent plant. And they do have seed grown as well, but the seeds are not going to retain 100% of the original trait. So I'm at the booth of Frisia Flora and this is the Anthurium Red, red Space. I saw that another booth has also this uh, product. I guess something that they are really trying to push. So this uh, Anthurium Red Space and it's Anthurium Magna with red crystallinum. But this is actually quite beautiful. Wow, and this is the array, the different seedlings here. This Red Space is actually really, really stunning. The more I look at it, Look at all these wonderful seedlings that come out of it. This one is so tiny, teeny tiny baby. My gosh. So this is the Anthurium Orthodox. It's actually a mutation from the Dorayaki. But look at that, it's like a bowl shape here. My gosh, this is very, very interesting. So uh, this is a community of aeroid growers and hybridizers from Bogor. We mentioned them several times in the other shows before. So they have some interesting anthuriums uh, shown here. This is an anthurium modianum variegated. Now keep in mind, this is still a baby, but I was asking the seller, which one is the latest leaf? And it's actually this tiny one. So the old leaf here look actually like a new leaf. It's got this like typical burgundy. So if you like the, the red burgundy new anthurium leaves and you want them to remain that way, this might be an interesting one to keep an eye out for. And it's got a bit of variegation too. So a uh, visual interest that's very interesting. Anthurium uh, red ruby from Tiapus. And this is actually the sibling and it came out as a mint. So the new leaf comes out like this and then they become this minty green color. This is really, really fascinating. There's actually a lot of products coming out of these kids from this community uh, of hybridizers. And they recommend this. This is the Anthurium black sweet. And it's apparently got a, a character that's very good that they actually recommend for collectors. So yeah. this here, this beauty was actually a mutation. I couldn't get the name out of this. So feel free to reach out 
Um, the hybridizer's name is Dadeng. He does make a lot of anthuriums. That new baby leaf is so stinking adorable. Look at that. And it's got this like amazing uh, silver finish and a very soothing light green color to it. And th that skirting around the edge of the leaves, that's also quite an interesting visual interest. This here, this is a Ford Sherman variegated. Beautiful variegation on this. And this here, this is a baby king of spades variegated. They can be really, really stunning when they grow a little bit more mature. And there are actually a lot of anthuriums that we overlook in this tour. These are like the more common type hybrids and species. They were actually quite trending maybe a year, two years ago, and everyone sought after them. But nowadays they become a lot more affordable. They've come in larger stock quantities. So most people who wanted one can probably get them at a rather affordable price. So we are seeing very few of those in this show this time, but there are some. And if you contact a lot of the sellers, the nurseries, they can probably show you some of the interesting varieties that they have but again these are not as trending as they were last year i think people really are promoting now the dark leaves or the interesting forms and of course the variegated ones which i don't think a lot of us can afford at this point but keep an eye out for them because people are propagating them this is a colocasia white monster and if it's a colocasia this can probably get quite big they do like very very strong light they don't do well indoors very, very beautiful, actually, this one. All right, so this is the uh, Florida Beauty Cross with Tortum that we are seeing in some of the booths. And also in Thailand, I believe some people have them in stock there now. But this is the hybridizer Eus from Frisha Flora. So he's doing some amazing work with not only anthurium, but also philodendron hybrids. And this is the larger form of that plant. So now you see it here, the Tortum Cross with Florida Beauty. This is a philodendron Maui Cross with Squamiferum that's mint so interesting look at that so if you're bored with your regular uh, mayoi philodendrons this is a variety to keep an eye out for and of course with frisha florida they have a different kinds of aeroids here a lot of epipremnums a lot of variegated monstera edinsonii and tons and tons of skin dapsis. there's so much here to cover these are all skin dapsis, and i think this is a piper this is a, sorry this is a ficus sagittata it's beautiful. What they're doing here is that they specialize, as you can see here, wall to wall, a lot of uh, variegated monster monsteras, and some of them look so freaking healthy, and the variegation look really beautiful, and they're all wonderfully fenestrated. This one new leaf is calling out to me. This is really, really stunning. And they also do have some other variegated aeroids. This is the caramel marble. This is the Ilsamanii. So there's a medium size. This is the larger one up here. And then they also have the baby one on sale here. They sell this. It's called the Epipermant Pinatum Yellow Sunrise. So this is interesting. I think there's different varieties of these being sold before. I think the name used to be Kujang, or maybe it's just an entirely new variety. But it's interesting, it's got that Epipremnum Aureum vibes, but it's got that sword-like Pinatum shape of the leaves. This is really interesting. And that one, look at that. That's already a big size. It's actually quite far back. So you can't really see the sheer size of that, but that is quite massive. And look at that dreamlike watercolor brush strokes, if you would call it that, on this plant. This is actually very beautiful. This is really, really stunning. And this too, it almost has that Diefenbachia dreamlike state, if you know what I mean. And when the new leaf unfurls, do you see that one in the center of the screen? They seem to almost dance open because they have so many fenestration on it. Look at that, it's so elegant. The way that it's opening up its leaf. This is very adorable. I really adore this. Seller caught up with me to explain that this variety had many names before, including the Epipremnum Kujang. He had found this plant grown under a mango tree under intense light. There was one particular node with a leaf that looks like this. Now he took that node and propagated all of this stock you see before you from that one single node. He claims that the variegation for this stock is far more stable and beautiful than other varieties of Epipremnum pinnatum, and that they hold up well in full sun. This is Blooming Nursery, so they do landscape design and architecture design, things like that. So they have large varieties of uh, Bilitai variegated and some uh, Monstera Thai constellation. Beautiful large platycerium. 
So they have a lot of large plants in their nursery to choose from for you know collection and also for landscaping services. But yeah, uh, we're seeing not that many uh, vendors carrying these billets high variegated. But if you remember last year's show, nearly every booth had this. So I'm happy to see that people have diversified a little bit away. They also have uh, aglonemas here, and aglonemas are also uh, aeroids and they make really good landscape. Well, can you aggro? And what's really interesting here is that they do sell different media here. I wonder if they are sustainable type. So as I was just explaining that these came from car dashboards. They were recycled into this and they're turned into pots. And that's awesome. Not only are the pots interesting in the design, but I really appreciate these extra holes like so. If you're an overwaterer like me, I'm, an, I'm a hopeless overwaterer. This pot could save many plants' lives. Look at that, they're very generous with their holes. This is really awesome. And this one, it greets everybody that passed by. It's so beautiful. This is an Alocasia Alba. Look at how beautiful the colors are. This one really called out to me when I walking by. And this is the rest of the booth, just in case you want to see. They have like some uh, Warroquianum, some variegated aeroids, anthuriums. These are all uh, pretty trending plants now. This is the booth of Ruang Tanam Jakarta. They're actually really, really good at decoration. They've always done really, really showy booths. And I've seen, they basically participate in every plant show possible. Look at how just stunning this whole display is. I think that every retail store, every coffee shop should kind of look like this. It's very warm and inviting. But anyways, they're really focused on variegated monsteras. And there are quite a few varieties here. This one here is the green on green variegation. This is the mint monstera, and this is the ocean mint, if I'm not wrong. And then he was just explaining to me that this one is the orange monstera. And what happens is that the leaves come out green on green variegation, and in the course of six months time, they will brighten into a bright orange color. And this one here is the yellow marlin. This is found by Mr. Kunzo. Look at how neon the yellows are. This is really stunning. This one leaf is really beautiful as well. And my gosh, I'm just really drawn to this visual display of these plants. No matter how you feel, no matter what angle you shoot, it is beautiful. This is uh, plant styling to the next level. And of course, the classical Borzigiana variegated monsteras. They never go out of style. I'm surprised that they are still a prized plant after all these ups and downs in the plant market. Look at that centerpiece back there. This is so beautiful. Wow. That VHI just dominating the background and a variegated monstera here. And this is really, really strange. It's some kind of philodendron, I think, but it's mutated. So it's like curling in on itself. Uh, at This is very, very showy. It's beautiful. So they have a lot of different plants here, a lot of aeroids I see, homalumina, that's variegated. I see a lot of anthuriums on here. And this here, it's a beautiful homalumina. And look at that new leaf that's coming out. This is stunning. And that bit of pink in the middle, that is very, very showy. And this is a SP from Borneo. Uh, this variegation was found at the nursery, so this is officially unnamed at this time. What a beauty. What a beauty, look at that. Oh my gosh. And tell me, this is not the most gorgeous Vecha you've ever seen. Look at this one here. I mean, they all have slightly different uh, waves on the leaves. Sorry, I was like very distracted. Someone just brushed past me. But this one is so interesting. Look at how tightly uh, packed together this is. Stunning. Yeah, they are quite a large booth. They basically occupied four booth space combined into one. So feel free to check out their business on your own time. But they have anthuriums, aeroids. These are Aglonema Pictum Tricolor. Variegated. Oh my gosh. So stunning. 
Oh my gosh, this Labesia variegated. Ah, uh, now I've seen everything. This is another gorgeous VTI. Look at that. This is so stunning. This here, this is an Alocasia Amazonica mint. And I was just told that the new leaf come out a little bit pinkish purple, which they do, not naturally. And then they slowly fade over time to become this green color. This is so, so beautiful, my gosh. Alocasia Friedeck variegated. Beautiful variegation, this. I think this has become quite affordable now. They used to be very, very sought after, very expensive, but they actually grow really fast and they propagate very easily. This is beautiful. And they have a lot of uh, anthuriums here. And up there, if you see, there's a large Alocasia cupria. It's actually really, really massive back there. So this is Sutra Farm, where archipelago, I guess from this sign here, it shows that they are interested in endemic native plants. And I see here that they are largely variegated. So there's a lot of epipremnums here, just like interesting green on green, and some of the white variegated. And it's a lot of skindapsis back there that's variegated. So just saying that this is apparently very rare, but it's also actually quite striking and beautiful. So this is a Refida for Vestigii narrow form. From Papua also. From Papua. Oh. Beautiful. So this is the booth of Plan the Plants. He sells aeroids primarily, and if I'm not wrong, he has a lot of large, large, large aeroids. So if you're looking for like mature aeroids, uh, this is a, a vendor that you can go to, but he also has some really interesting rare ones. This is a variegated philodendron UPI. I think this is the, maybe the white monster, if I'm not wrong. And I see either the orange or the yellow Marilyn huge plumbing and of course they built this beautiful green wall behind it. I saw them try to set up this up last night. So they did a really good job of setting this up very last minute. This here, I thought this was a anthurium, but I was corrected by the staff here. Can you give you three seconds to guess what this is? Because this is the Milano Chrysler. And I don't know if you remember a time where this was sought after and every booth sold the Milano Chrysler. And now this is the only melanoma chrysum we see in the entire show. This is how fast the turnaround of plant trends can be. Uh, they have a lot of variegated monstera here. So if you want to check out their price, uh, the quality seems to be very good. And of course the Anthurium Warroquianum. Uh, this seller is probably also selling plants that have proven sales record, that they move fast and are still relatively uh, rare. So yeah, this is one, and the variegation is actually quite beautiful. Wagana pot plants, they actually have been around. They've been in all the shows, basically, and they do a lot of aeroids, usually with the variegated. There's some skin depths down here. We won't spend too much time with them. Uh, this is also a beautiful skin depths. We used to see them sold as like single leaf cuttings, and now we're seeing them sold in larger sizes. And this actually looks a little bit like a philodendron white wizard, a little bit the coloration. And actually this skin dapsis is quite striking. The variegation is actually really, really beautiful. And they have some variegated anthuriums here. So I guess anthurium variegated are already starting to hit the markets. I predicted 2024, but they're starting to come out. This is 35, I think 35 million Indonesian rupiah. They're still very, very expensive. It's for people who really um, want to invest in getting the mother plants to propagate for next year's market. Because this, I think, will take off next year or so. And here are some variegated uh, Raphidophoras. And here's the thing, Raphidophoras, uh, the variegated ones, they never really took off. People did try to propagate, people sell them. They grow really fast, they're reliable. But this is probably why they're also not um, trending and, and it's, it's hard for them to take off for some reason, yeah. But they have been around for a while and there's many, many, many varieties of variegated Raphidophoras and different species, of course. So this is Akbar Garden and coconut plants. They're actually from Eastern Java and they grow a lot of aeroids here. And I was just informed that they do export almost on a daily basis to Europe and the United States. So as you can see here, there are a lot of anthuriums. This is dark leaf anthuriums. 
And then you've got your popular variegated plants here, your biliotides. And of course, here you have the variegated anthuriums. I'm really surprised that these variegated anthuriums have taken over the market so quickly, but they're still largely very, very expensive at this time. So this is uh, Aglonema supplier here. And from my Aglonema video, which a lot of people watch, uh, people ask if there are sellers. So here's one that has a huge array of Aglonemas to choose from, uh, different colors. I love that flamingo pink ones over here. Uh, if you get up close to them, they're actually really stunning. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have all the time in the world today. They all have special uh, characteristics and beauty in their leaves. And again, I want to remind you guys, when you buy aglonemas, they look like that, single stems. But if you give them a few years, they eventually will become large like this. They will bush out like crazy. And one thing that I need to remind everyone, and including myself, is that they hate water. The, the fastest way to kill aglonema is by overwatering, and I, I keep doing it. I just tried to rescue an aglonema last week because it was soaked in water, and I should have known better. <laughs> but yeah, after killing about 20 aglonemas, I still haven't learned my lesson. But this is a plant that are very, very drought tolerant. They like it a bit drier. They like it very, very bright. But yeah, sorry, I digress quite a bit because I'm really bitter about how badly I manage my aglonemas, and I should have taken care of them better. They really need bright light, uh, good airflow, and very little water. Underwater them if, if you can, uh, instead of overwatering. That one is actually very beautiful. We've seen this before on the channel. It almost looks like a philodendron birkin, but look at that, the new leaf. My gosh, this is fantastic. And the older leaves turn into this. But here's the thing. Uh, People say that these colored aglonemas, they don't really ship that well. But correct me if I'm wrong, this is why we rarely see them overseas. Uh, they grow well here and in Thailand, but when you ship them overseas, they're a little bit uh, difficult to acclimatize. But they're so stunning here. I hope more people will give them a chance to grow them out. I'm going to show you what it looks like from up top. Look at this aglonema on aglonema action. This is really stunning. There are actually a lot of sellers of aglonemas here. I just haven't been able to connect people with a specific one. This is Asa Tangrang Raya. This is actually an aglonema seller as well. As you can see, they're very busy, uh, but I'm not going to impose too much of their time, but they carry a lot of aglonemas here, a lot of species. Feel free to follow them. And I know that you guys did ask me before, for any recommended seller. So maybe this is one good candidate. And this one here says it's the Aglonema Goliath Mera, which is Aglonema Red Goliath. It's actually really stunning. Beautiful Aglonemas here. We're at Aska Garden. Stunning. And this one too, this is a variegated variety of Aglonema. There's so much, so many species of them, you guys. You have no idea. If you have not started with Aglonemas, there's a lot to explore, a lot to love in this genus. This is the Aglonema Minion. This is one of his hybrids. Oh yeah, stunning that is. It's actually very compact, very beautiful. And this is the Golden Hope. I think last year they launched this and it was really, really a successful release. How stunning is that? Look at that. And don't forget that Aglonemas are actually aeroids, even though they don't look like one. And this is another one, this is the Gianti. And it's starting to flower. I'm in front of Taman Tangkal here and they do a lot of aeroids here. They've been around for a while and this is a Thamatophyllum that is variegated, it can become really large. They have a lot of monsteras, a lot of philodendrons, some anthuriums here, and they have this glass enclosure. I see some variegated alocasias. Let's take a quick look. That's beautiful, actually, and this is also really, really stunning. Um, some pink plants, I think pink princess, but I don't know what that one is. So I was just told that that's actually a philodendron rose princess. That's probably a variety of the uh, pink princess. This is actually one of my favorite, the red tongue will variegate it. Every time I see them, I have to say hi. It's, it's definitely on my wish list. But I see a lot of interesting variegated alocasias here. When we were in Thailand, we saw quite a few of them. They were very trending in Thailand. And I think this is one of the booths with the more complete 
collection of variegated alocasias. That one too. Cute. I've mentioned this a few times in different tours in Thailand as well, but there's a lot of Thai constellation that is coming into the market. They all have different uh, shapes, different variegations, different shades of like, and now the coloration splashes and things like that. I can't keep up with all the names, but uh, there's a lot to choose from these days. I guess this is the classic Monstera Thai constellation that we see everywhere. And I hear that the new batches of them have a little bit more of these uh, sections of variegations. The old classic ones tend to be more like this. This is why they're called the constellation. They look like a star constellation. And I think we forget before the aeroid craze uh, due to COVID, these guys are actually landscaping plants before. And now they've become a bit more rare and a bit more expensive. And of course, we're enjoying a lot more varieties coming out now. And that's a large Billy Thai. As we talk about the Thai constellation, there's a few varieties here. This one is called the... Galaxy. The Galaxy. Yeah. And next to it, we've got the white... White snow. White snow. Oh, so this is more white as a snow. Yeah. It's actually really, really beautiful. These are still babies, so imagine when they get large. And this one is this uh, something else. This is the variegation thing. This is the regular variegated Thai cons. But this one has a lot of uh, sections of yeah. variegation, which is really, really beautiful. Are these expensive now or not? It's around 1000 baht this one. A thousand thirty dollars. So we saw this in Thailand, and they, uh, it was named Simba back then. But I think more people know it as Miracle now. So this is a tricolor variety of the Thai constellation. Is it okay if I if, if I ask for the price? Is it yeah, sure? It's like in Indonesia, it's like one hundred seventy million. It's one seventy million. Wow, yeah. oh, one seventy million. <laughs> this is crazy. But it's beautiful. Like and this is a weird, this is a variegated tortum. This is also a very beautiful variegated tortum. They look like a like palm, yeah. but this is a... Is this, what is this, the spiritus? spiritus yeah. Holy crap, spiritus variegated here. Um, and Pariso variegated. We, we've seen this many times. We've been to so many shows, we've seen all these. But it's refreshing to, to, to see them sometimes. This Tantilobum variegated. The, oh, okay, this is near. This Tantilobum variegata. This one also, the dark billete variegated. Dark billete, is it billete Thai cross with Adaba Ponce? Yeah. yeah. That's variegated, this is cool. Holotonianum. Sorry, Holtonianum. This is tripartia. But this is a species. Yes. Holtonianum. By the way, uh, what the nursery name is Super Nursery yeah. in Thailand, but they collaborate with an uh, American seller Mike Mike. by the name of Mike, Michael D'Andrea, which you have seen a lot of lately. Variegated UBI. This is glorious and variegated, it's still a baby. But this is actually very beautiful. A lot of different kinds of variegated skin dapses. So you're gonna really have to follow them just to find out what they have. But this is just a, a brief look at the different varieties. There's like a new skin dapsis variety being announced every few weeks from Indonesia. A lot of them are coming out. This is particularly interesting. This one, it says it's a uh, Bakuda Pati. But this is interesting. Look at that variegation, that leaf. It's a more variegated skin dapsis. It says it's a moonlight, uh, I guess a true beyond moonlight marble variegation. And then this is a Megasperma. This is a Raphidophora. Um, this is still a baby, but they're a climber. They're prolific climbers, these guys. But beautiful. I'm looking at this very minty type leaf. This is actually quite stunning. This is a Florida Beauty cross with Tortum. My gosh. So this is the product of Eus um, from Frisha Flora. So his stock is uh, being uh, carried in different nursery, different stores now. But this is still very rare and it's coming out of Indonesia. This is amazing. This is so cool. There's like a Thai buyer here. There's another one over there. I don't know if they're doing live selling or whatever, but we are having a lot of different buyers from different parts of the world come in here to this show. And of course, some of the vendors here are also from overseas. So that's interesting. And this here is a whole bin of skin dapsis variegated. There's different types here. Look at all these memes. I cannot keep track of the skin dapsis variegated. I remember back in the days when there were only like four or five varieties to remember, but now they're just, they're just everywhere. This is beautiful. So these are all skin dapsis as well. Let me pick a favorite one in front of you. I think my favorite one in here is probably... Oh. This is beautiful, but I already have this. So I see it like every day. 
And that's a problem when you have a plan and you love, oh, this is actually beautiful. I'm going to select this one then. <laughs> this is the skin depth of Baku Dapati. Baku Dapati from Kalimantan. Only because it's got this beautiful stripe down the middle, like the yellow. So it looks almost like a philodendron Brazil in a way. But this is a skin dapsis. Yeah, I'm really quite taken by this one. But back to my story, I was saying that I have this and I see it every day and it no longer becomes special. So sometimes, I don't know, when you like a plant and you buy it and you see it every day, <laughs> maybe they don't hold such a special place in your heart anymore. This is also very interesting. It's a dark leaf skin dapsis with a bit of a light variegation there for interest. This is a quite interesting, like it's like a it's like painting from like the dark ages, if you know what I mean. It's a bit gothic. Oh, and this vendor I just found is Han Garden. Han Garden or Pak Han, he's actually a collector and a pro propagator and seller of Indonesian endemic plants. So if you're looking for Epipremnum, Skindapsis, Aroids that are from low Indonesia, look at that beautiful one. But he's someone that you can go to and find something reliable. So Raf House, they're actually a, a plant grower here that is very popular. I've seen them in a few plant shows, but they have uh, this tissue culture lab that they're launching. So there's these products here. So they do purchase orders. You can order tissue culture plants from them or you can buy their ready stock. And best is Thai Constellation here. Cute little baby Thai constellations. How cute is that? Uh, and, and of course, these are very popular. This, this will get huge, mint variegated uh, and theorem pokery eyes. So this is the uh, booth of Tum from Thailand. Welcome to Indonesia. And this is the Instagram, I have it on the screen. But they are promoting two products here. One is the Platinum that's on the wall and there's some baby Platinums here. These are all Thai constellations. We're seeing some come in from Thailand. And the legacy is twice as expensive as the Platinums. And this is the larger forms of them. All right, so apparently this booth was designed by this Instagram account. And let me show you, this is actually very, very beautiful. Look at all these beautiful drift woods and all these aeroids just blending in seamlessly. And the background over there, this really, really beautiful arrangement there. It's very dramatic. I quite like it. And uh, this here, this is the Aglionima uh, Jaipong Soksom variegated. Look at that. This is so cute. So here's actually Bandung Collapse. There's a few uh, collaborations here. And that's what's happening here in some of these booths. Uh, people share the space because it is a little bit expensive. And also there's very limited space in this exhibition. And someone bought that, that's cute. So they have a lot of different aeroids here. Again, different growers. And this is Monster Burl, uh, Monster Burl Mart's Flame. Um, I think they were very trending last year. And nowadays people are growing them large. And the large varieties of these are actually starting to look beautiful. I'm seeing a lot of people post these on Instagram. But back then when we saw this, there's only single leaf cuttings being sold. And that's a very cute Alocasia fry deck, very gotta. I think this is also one of those Alocasia variegated that is quite stable. Correct me if I'm wrong, but every time I see it in plant shows and even plant competitions, their variegation has always been kind of reliable. From Bangkok, welcome to Indonesia. And this is uh, the crown of Siam. This is an aglonema. It's beautiful. I actually saw this at the uh, show in Thailand. The video is going to come out somewhere in January, but uh, this is a very, very beautiful aglonema. Look at that. I, I filmed a larger specimen of this. Stunning. So they told me that this is called the uh, Sol Algonima Sombat. I don't know how to pronounce it variegated, but obviously it's from Thailand. And what I like about this is that it does have that golden potos kind of vibe. It's kind of a bit like a Diefenbach, yeah. It's cute. And they're also selling some variegated anthuriums here. So I guess Thailand is also scaling up, ramping up production for the variegated anthuriums. So there's a few tenants here. Uh, I think these are the list of tenants. And they're coming in from Jogja. This is an interesting glass enclosure. We're seeing a lot more of these glass enclosures in recent shows. And some skin daps is variegated. Um, on Mint here. It's very uh, difficult to credit whose plan it is when there's a few people sharing the same booth. This is another uh, Monstera Burl Marks Flame. And then this isn't, we have not seen this in a while. This is the Amidrium Zippolianum Variegated. Uh, they also were saturating the plant market. It's Syngonium, uh, forgot the name. Uh, but this was Strawberry Ice. This was very expensive at some point. Uh, some Black Cardinal Babies, Adinsonii Ice, that's Variegated. So there's a bit of everything. 
in here. And this, I must say, I've been saying this many times, this is the philodendron dragon, and this is the variegated, but the golden dragon or the green form of this is actually one of my favorite philodendrons, I must say. Uh, and also, of course, the variegated ones is also quite interesting visually. Imagine this in a watercolor painting. Uh, it's just so stunning. But I don't know why I've never had the heart to pick one out yet. They can get really, really big. This is Jules Gardens and Friends, and they do variegated aeroids. Uh, a lot of monsteras, of course, some caramel marble, some uh, monstera mints, syngonium, I think scrambled eggs, if I'm not wrong, and shells full of skindapsis. This is actually really beautiful. Sorry, I've been filming a few of these because they all have different unique shapes as we run into them. And this is one of the larger ones that we've seen in the show this time. I don't know, maybe I am kind of in a market for one, but let's see, I gotta take care of the plants that I have now, but this has been really call calling me out. So this is Nusa plant. They're coming in from Jogja and uh, they focus on Indonesian endemic plants and they're trying to propagate them sustainably and uh, scale them up for production so that many people can access to these in Indonesian plants. And this here is a uh, Homolomina sp borneo. And as the name suggests, it's probably from Borneo. It's very stunning, actually. Homolominas are often misunderstood in the care. I'm not an expert, but uh, you might want to look into the care before you adopt a homolomina. They are a little bit more moisture loving than your philodendrons. Uh, look at this beautiful, this is beautiful from the side. But I honestly don't know much about this one and I, I don't really know what to say about the care, but they're not easiest. I would say if you're a beginner, uh, maybe go with the easier plants first, but homolominas have the potential to become beautiful. They grow in a rosette pattern like this, if you look at it from up above. So they actually appreciate uh, light from up above, top light. And this here, this is a Certosperma johnstonii. This is actually very beautiful. Look at that. These are actually swamp plants. They want to be in moist soil. Uh, and Mr. Greg is trying to breed them so that they are more hardy, they can become house plants, they can survive indoor conditions, but they actually are aerites that support beautiful foliage and their flowers, Certosperma flowers, are actually really beautiful. So we'll be looking forward to some variations of the Certosperma for the flowers and ease of growth indoors. This is another Certosperma and the leaves are very typical of a Certosperma. They look like a rabbit's head. But look at the patio, it's actually zebra in the patio. This is actually interesting. And what's easy about them is that so just, they just want to live in water. So you just put this in a bowl of water and it will do well for you. And of course you need bright, indirect light. And some citrus warmers also live in full sun. This is really beautiful. This is, uh, it says Photos Barbarianus. Look at how stunning it is. It's a shingling aroid. The color is so extremely striking. Love it. So I was just given this plant. It's a Sotrosperma macro macrotum. This is the hybrid name. Uh, thank you so much. But yeah, I'll take care of this one. So this booth is Plantastic Garden. They're actually located not so far away from here in Bintaro and Graha Raya. This is a interesting Amedrium medium mint. I uh, actually really like this plant because it grows really well for you and the variegated is really, really stunning. But anyways, Graha Raya, where they're located, is a stretch of plant shops slash mini nurseries that I used to shop from. I used to enjoy buying plants from there. So maybe one day I'll visit again uh, to show you what that row of plant shops look like. So this is Flora Ayu Nusantara, and I bet that's Ayu on the, in the middle, she's the owner. I actually never asked her name before, but I assumed it was Ayu, but I've been wrong before. So there's some variegated homolominas here. And she pointed out this is her favorite plant, and it is mine too. It's an aglonema that I absolutely adore, the aglonema Lotus Delight. And more homolominas, there's actually many varieties of homolominas, Skindapsis, uh, this is Epipremnums, 
And this is a very popular photo booth. A lot of people stop by to take photo in front of this uh, light fixture here. We're in front of Tasson's Craft Garden and he has some Monstera here. Honestly, I do not know how to differentiate between these, but this is a Tycon variety that's also very sought after. And here, there's a variegated aglonema. This is the Siam Aurora. We did film this when we were in Thailand. So if you saw the episode, you'll see this plant. It's actually very much on my wish list because the Siam Aurora is an easy growing aglonema that's forgiven me multiple times from overwatering. And this variegated varieties, just so much, so, so beautiful. And there's a lot of caladium bulbs here. So there are some photos and um, the single bulb living in there, I guess it's very cute. That one's already put out a little uh, growth point there. And there's some caladiums here as well. My gosh, these are actually very beautiful. And don't forget, caladiums are in fact aroids. Look at that, that's so stunning. And this one here, the tip, this is stunning. So this is Pandora plants. This is their caladiums. Look at that, so cute. Look at that, There's a bit of white on here. Wow, look at all these caladiums. And there's more over there. I can't get close to it. It's just too packed here. Uh, maybe these ones, we can get a closer look. Wow, Thailand ha hybridizes a lot of caladiums. There was a caladium craze during the pandemic. That's why they have so many varieties to enjoy. And this one here is actually very beautiful. And this as well, my gosh, this is very, very cheerful. Look at that. This is Lavi plants from Bandung. This one is kind of hilarious. It's like half unfurling right here in the show. And uh, I really love it when leaves are just emerging and they're still soft. And it just sometimes when, you know, like people who got give birth in the wrong place, in the worst place possible and sometimes in a show. There are a lot of variegated biliotai here in stock. And Monstera, Adansonii, variegated. They have become a lot more affordable these days. And of course, a lot of variegated Monsteras. This is Philodendron Pink Princess, and they call this the F1 here. Uh, they discovered this in Indonesia, and they basically have very glorious variegation, as you can see here. Uh, the price is still very steep. It's around five, uh, 5 million Indonesian rupiah but it's quite extraordinary. I mean, when you see pink princesses, like the variegation, this is like the basically the supermodel of all pink princesses. This is beautiful. And just very, very healthy variegated Monstera. I know that some of you guys have been complaining that you're still buying uh, variegated Monsteras that are way overpriced, expensive. Give Indonesia a try because from what I see here, a lot of growers here are growing them well and there's a lot in stock and I think the price is also quite reasonable from Indonesia, except for shipping. Shipping might be expensive, but there's a lot of stock here for variegated monsteras and a lot of the mints and all the more rarer yellow varieties are also available here in Indonesia. Nanam jadi teman, in English, it means from plants until friends. A lot of variegated ties here. And behind the billiard ties, you will see a lot of Monstera mint. They're actually very sought after now. In my opinion, they're still very expensive. And this is the booth of Ray Garden. And before COVID came, when I was just about to collect plants, I bought a lot from their online store. So Ray Garden contributed a lot to my plant collections in the early days. And also with a lot of terracotta pots. I bought a lot of terracotta pots from them. And it's nice to see that they have a lot of interesting variegated monsteras here. They're all the different varieties here. Uh, these are the Thai constellations. I don't know the names, don't ask me. But I also see uh, this one is almost like a white mint. And this one here that's almost white. I don't know if this is the white monster but I could be wrong. The leaves turn uh, more green as they age. This is the Thematophyllum angela. This is also the work of Mr. Greg Hambali. Beautiful variegation. For these Thematophyllums, you need a lot of space to grow them. They become very, very big and almost quite quickly too. There's some smaller specimens over here. 
And this one is also beautiful with the variegation. This is Bakasi Aeroid community and this variegated UBI, we have actually featured this a few times in different shows. Uh, they are starting to come into stock. This one is actually sold, which is cute. And then there's the variegated Birkin. We saw this in Thailand a few months ago, some variegated alocasia. So some of these like ultra rare plants are becoming a little bit more uh, widespread than they were one year ago. This is an Amorphophallus variegated. I think this was purchased by Mr. Eddie Pranoto. Thank you so much for coming along with me on this exhilarating tour. It certainly opened my eyes to the creativity and determination of Indonesian growers. There are wonderful new aeroids with interesting varieties being discovered, hybridized, and propagated for year 2024. I was shocked to see plant prices go up, along with quality, diversity, and beauty. I noticed that the biggest buyers of these varieties were other growers, as well as the occasional millionaire. While the majority of us collectors cannot afford these new products at the moment, they're being produced and distributed worldwide to meet our insatiable demand and at an agreeable price much later on in the game. For those living abroad, you saw it here first. Don't be alarmed when you see these plants make their way into your rare plant shops soon. In this tour, I have also skimmed past many aeroids that we have featured before on this channel. You may see them in my past plant show tour video. Videos. A lot of these aeroids have become widely available here in Indonesia and have become quite affordable. The businesses featured in this episode are likely reputable and responsible, so feel free to reach out. With that being said, I will sail off into the peaceful evening. I will see you in the next episode with the non-aeroids. Here's some more information on today's sponsor, Exit Plant. Over many years, you guys have asked me a lot of questions about plant imports from Indonesia, and some of you even have to deal with nasty plant scammers, which is why I'm proud to mention today's sponsor, Exit Plant. Formerly known as Titi Kijau, Exit Plant have five years of experience shipping more than 50,000 plants worldwide. I've personally used their service to ship hundreds of plants overseas with great success. Unlocking this service will give you full access to the Indonesian market because as you know, most growers here cannot export. Exit Plant is increasing its service options from customized growing solutions to technology and education. Learn more on their website and get your free consultation today. Shopping in Indonesia has never been easier. Thank you Patreon members for supporting the channel. Should you consider joining as a member, the Patreon link is Sean from Only Plants. It can also be found in this video description. I've started producing bonus contents for members. These include plant hauls, plant shopping, and mini bite-sized adventures. The same bonus contents will also be unlocked for you if you join to become a YouTube member of the channel. There is a monthly membership fee as small as a cup of coffee a month. Simply go to Only Plants channel page and click join. Your contributions help me grow the channel, do better content, and have a better quality of life. For that, I thank you from the bottom of my heart.